What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of my hip hop review. Um, it's your boy Reg in the building. The album I'm about to talk about today is Gangstar's fourth studio album, Hard to Earn. This was released in 1994 on Crystal Craftless Records and stuff like that. Um, singles albums known for Dwick, which Dwick was a single that was originally. That was the B side to I want to say Take It Personal, but you know they put it on this album too. Which that song features um Nice and Smooth by the way, Mass Appeal, Code of the Streets, and Suckers Need Bodyguards. Guest appearances include Nas, AG, Master Ace, MC8, DJ Scratch, Mr. C, um, Lil Dap, J Wu the Damager, Nice and Smooth. Malachi the Nutcracker and Big, Big Shug. And um, Primo and Guru, both Gangsta, produced this whole fucking project. So, Alright, so the last album I talked about from Gangsta was when we did um, Daily Operation back in the Speak to Clout days and stuff like that. Um, after the release of Daily Operation, you know, they kind of, um, um, you know, Guru released his solo album. Jazz and Taz Volume 1 in 1993 and you know with that album that album um, was very 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 dope album which eventually I'm going to definitely review that album I'll probably review it without the I'm going to probably get the physical copy eventually but if I don't get it within a month I might just review it anyway and stuff like that because you know and it, the dope thing about Jazz and Taz Volume 1 was that the album was like one of the first hip hop albums they actually really have like a live jazz band, like really like he would collaborate with people he would sample the tracks from. Like, you know, he collaborated with cats like Lonnie Liston Smith, um, Donald Byrd, rest in peace to him, Roy Ayers, and shit. So yeah, that was a very, very, very dope album and shit like that. And uh, the album actually recently, I wanna say last year for the either last year or the twenty eighteen. I want to say 2018, they recently re-released the album for like a 25th anniversary too, so yeah man, that just says a lot. And around this time too, you know, Primo was building up his production resume and stuff like that, you know, around 90, 93, 94, he was producing for cats like um, Nas, I want to say like Nas, you know, of course, you know, he was getting, he was getting his stuff together with, um, you know, J. Wood Damages, um, The Sun Rises in the East, which I reviewed that album years ago and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And I always felt like it was a dope album. You know, he did like a lot of shit on Karis Once, um, Return of the Boom Bap album and stuff like that. And of course, you know, he did the fucking ill, he did a couple tracks on Illmatic and stuff, you know, so yeah, man. Um, and also, you know, around that time, oh, and how can I forget, you know, he was, um, oh no, he didn't start working with M.O.P. till, um, he did a few remixes, like the Rugged Never Smooth remix, but he didn't really start working with M.O.P. heavily until, like, the Firing Squad album and shit. And around the time in 94, I want to say, I want to say 94 was the year that I want to say, like, Guru was kind of going through like, I think it was around this year he was going through like some gun charges. He was going through like a gun charge and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, I want to say it was around this time this album was released or a little after the album was released and stuff like that. I want to say, but, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah. Um, What happened was from what I looked up, he got arrested for taking like, gun to like an airport and stuff like that you know what i'm saying so yeah so he was arrested for that around 94 and you know around this around this time when they were working on the, excuse me when they were working on this album and stuff like that um pretty much you know he talked about the reason why they call this album hard to earn is for because like to if you wanted to like get respect like on a song a, a long way to go Getting respect in the hip hop game, yeah, it's like a long way to go getting go respect in the hip hop game and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so I felt I felt like that was pretty dope. Um, this is actually the first 
hip hop album. This is actually the first hip hop album that was um no no see this is actually their first album that got the parental advisory sticker and stuff like that. So yeah. Cause you know the first three albums, No More Mr. Nice Guy, Step in the Arena, and Daily Operation. You know, they, they were barely cursing on those albums and stuff like that. With this album, you kind of hear Guru, you know what I'm saying, fuck and shit a couple times and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I always love the fucking album cover, like the red, like the red background with the fucking album cover and stuff like that. I always had like a very grimy appeal towards this shit. Gangstar Foundation, you know, front and center right there, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, man, like, very, very dope, alright, so, oh, I actually made a mistake, Drew, he actually didn't get arrested for, like, the gun charge until, um, 96, so, that was a mistake on my part, and shit, so, my fault about that, alright, so, 17 tracks, Let's get this shit started. Track number one, intro, the first step. Um, yeah, this was a very good, this was a very cool track. Nice way to start off the album. You know, pretty much like, pretty much like broke down like the main concept of the album. Excuse me, sorry about that. The main concept of the album, how I talk about how rappers get respect for the rap game and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, and you know, rapping, you keep true to their own style, you know what I'm saying, so yeah, very dope, very dope track right there, no, nice intro, track number two, A Long Way To Go, very, very dope track, one of my all-time favorite Gangstar tracks in period, originally this track was supposed to have been for the Poetic Justice soundtrack, but it didn't make the final cut, and around this at the time of the recording of this track, Guru, you know, if you guys witnessed, like, his flow was, like, a little disoriented, because he was, like, he was drunk when he recorded this track, and it's not the regular Guru, the smooth flow Guru, like, his flow was, like, very rugged, like, it's very disoriented and stuff like that, you know, so, yeah, like, but it, it's not, like, old dirty bastard drunk, if that's what y'all thinking, so, yeah. Very dope track. Uh, I love the line when he says, And in the daytime, because I don't come up with corny rhymes, I'm too devoted to the concept of getting mine. So here's a deal like Shaquille O'Neal. If you don't know what you're doing, how the hell can you be real? Yeah, man, like, very dope track right there. Um, track number three, Code of the Streets. Man. This is another classic track right here when it comes to the G Gangstar. You know what I'm saying? Um... Self-explanatory is talking about, you know, the code of the streets, how motherfuckers got to live by, motherfuckers got to live by the code and shit like that. How, and like, how the street life isn't really for everybody. Because you know these motherfuckers, you know, it's kind of funny how a lot of these motherfuckers want to say how, oh, they're about that life and shit, but when they actually put on the fucking test, they ain't really about what they say they about and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, they quick to be like, oh my god, oh my god. So yeah, um, very dope track, um, The Code of the Streets. I love that beat by Primo. That's like one of Primo's grimiest beats ever, in my opinion. Um, track number four, Brainstorm. Playing in the background at the moment. Um, yeah, this track right here is just pretty much Guru just going to ham on the mic. Giving portable, giving rhymes and shit like that. You know, he's saying some shit like, You vote my whole... Your vote may hold the key, it's up to you till it's true. Cool be herb of the day. And when you fake, you break, when suckers choose, they lose. I'm like lethal to you and your people. It's like an outrage when punk step on stage. Well, I love the way he said that shit. I love the way he delivered that line. Um, track number five, Tons of Guns. Um, very dope track right here. Um, this track right here is just talking about, you know, the gun control. How one all has like a gun and stuff like that. And whatnot and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man, very, 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 very dope track. Because you know it's kind of crazy because you know in this day and age, 
any, anybody can just obtain a gun these days and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And people always want to say, oh, guns are the issue. Guns are not the issue. The people behind the guns are the issue because one has to always use a gun for protection. But, you know, there's always that one dude that gets a gun and just ends up coming like a lunatic and wants to shoot everybody that pisses him off and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, tons of guns. Very dope track right there. Um, track number six, The Planet. Um, this is pretty much like one of the longest tracks off the album. This track right here is talking about how Guru traveled from Boston to New York because you guys, should, if you guys are Gangstar fans, you guys should know both Guru and Primo were not originally from New York. Just to let y'all know. Primo was originally from Houston, Texas. Guru was originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and stuff. So just throwing that out there. Um, and so with um, the planet, he's just talking about how he became to New York and shit like that. How he came into his own. Very dope track, you know. Like I love the lines where he says, um, "I seen a lot of ill shit on my block happen nightly. East New York is no joke, kid. And peace to my man Haas doing his big. I went to Flatbush to buy incense and weed." Stop at the book stand for something to read. That shit was rough because my pockets was bare. Like, I love the fucking, love this fucking track right there. The planet. Not only one of my favorites off this project. Not not only one I would listen to if I were in the mood to listen to Hard to Earn, but this one of those tracks I would definitely recommend if, in case you like Guru when it comes to like Guru's performance and stuff. Track number seven, I right, chill. Um, this is pretty much an interlude. Pretty much an interlude where it has like rappers just leaving primo like a voice messages and stuff like that. Like you got people like um, MC8, Nas, um, Mr. C, you know, cats like that. So nothing really to it. Um, track number eight, Speak Clout. Very dope track. This is actually the sequel track to um, I'm the Man from the Daily Operation album. Um, again, it features um, Lil Dap and Jay the Damager. Um, the beat is a lot more darker, a lot more grimy and shit like that, which I'm going to talk about the production at the end of the album, review and stuff like that. Wow. Mm. If I was to say who had the best verse, I want to say both J. Wu. J. Wu and Guru definitely was toe-to-toe -to -toe in my opinion, but I will have to give the slight nod to J. Wu and shit, especially when he was saying shit like, you know, I ride the A train to get mad beats, so when we bang bang boogie out jumps my boot knocks. Chick cut chick come and flocks when DR <coughs> Excuse me. When DRS rocks blocks are not needed, it's all done with the mind. Very dope track right there. Um Yeah man, it's kinda interesting because both Guru and J Ru switched places when they were um doing this whole song and stuff like that. So yeah. Very dope track. Um, Lil Dap, he definitely did his thing on this one too. So, this not not anything taken away from that. Track number nine, The Wick, featuring um, Nice and Smooth. Yeah, man. Um, this was really one of my first Gangstar songs that I actually heard and stuff. So, yeah, very dope track. Um, this was a B-side to take it personal. And it's kind of crazy because... Primo, he actually did an interview on Complex where he talked about this song, and he talked about how Nice and Smooth um, did a record called Down the Line. I want to say that's from the Ain't a Damn Thing Changed album from '91. I'm I'm not the I'm not the biggest Nice and Smooth fan like that. I I've only heard a couple of songs here and there, so but I've had I, I do have like a lot of respect for them, like when it comes to the whole. Singing in hip hop. Mm, excuse me. So yeah, I'm not. So that I'm not. I don't really have the biggest knowledge, but I want to say down the line was on the Ain't a Damn Thing Changed album, and so that song uses the Gangstar sample to manifest. And so I think Primo he liked the record, and you know they were hanging out and chilling. That's when they came up and recorded the Wick at um Power Play. So yeah, very dope track right here. Um, a lot of quotables, man. A lot of fucking quotables on this track. Like, I, I like Greg Nice's verse, man. Greg Nice, he definitely had that 
that fucking verse, but like Drew's verse alone, it just had like so many ill quotables and stuff like. And again, he was like drunk when he made this verse. He was drunk when he made this verse too. So just throwing it out there like lemonade is popular drink and it still is. I get my props and stunts to Bruce Willis and shit like. It may sound simplistic and shit like that, but at the same time, just the way he delivered that line and stuff like that, like, he just said that with so confidence. Like, I just love the way he was going in on that fucking verse and shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, very dope track. Very, 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 very dope track and stuff like that. Oh, and be, if you guys can find it, check out the performance they did in, in, um, in Living Color and stuff like that. Very, very dope performance and shit, so... Yeah, man. Yeah, that's we were one of my favorite shows of all time in Living Color, man. Like, damn, Keenan Ivy Wayans, Jim Theory, Jamie Foxx, man. Like, yeah, man. Very, very dope show. But I'm getting off topic at the moment. Um, Next track, Words from the Nutcracker. This is pretty much like a solo, a solo um track with um Malachi the Nutcracker from the um from um Group Home. Poem fame, yeah, man. Um, you know, Malachi's doing his thing and shit like that. Pretty cool track. Um, next track, Mass Appeal. I mean, this is like my favorite track off this whole album. Um, this is like a fan favorite to a lot of people. Um, this track right here was when um, they talk about rappers who sell out for like fucking Mass Appeal for crossover success and whatnot. So very, very, very dope track. Um, that fucking beat like that. I, I always had memories playing that song whenever I was playing um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Pro Skater Underground 4. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas know what the fuck I'm talking about. All my video game heads, y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about and shit, so. And it's kind of crazy too, because they're actually making a documentary about the whole series too, which I can't wait to fucking see that, man, like, I feel bad because I gave that fucking game away, damn, and I know this shit's probably, like, expensive as hell these days and stuff, too, so, because I used to have that for the GameCube, man, like, the fucking GameCube, man, well, I still got my Wii, I still got the Wii and stuff, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a video game head, like, I'm not just gonna stick to, like, the current consoles and shit, like, I'm, I would get, like, the back-in-the-day consoles and shit like that, that's just who I am, so yeah, um, so yeah, that's on um, fucking Mass Appeal, so yeah, very, very dope track, I love that fucking beat that they did, one of Primo's most perfect beats, um, and when Guru was just saying, no way you'll never make it, come with the weak shit, I'll break it, slip into the zone, mad rhymes will stack you, yeah, lines with rifle, go blast when I kick some ass, a lot of rappers be like one time wonders, like, um, um, this line, oh yes, I'm greater than all MCs when I breeze, give me room please. I'll be that fascinating when I be updating. Cut off a rat cars, pull their trunk cars, I thump hard. And make them say that I'm God. Niggas be pretending they're hardcore. Never know the meaning of... They never had a DJ scratch. For it. Oh, that's a very, like, top three gangstar songs of all time and shit, man. Like, very, very dope track. Um, yeah. Track number 12, Blowing Up. Blowing up the spot. Um, again, another dope track with just Guru going in on the fucking mic and shit like that. Um, yeah, very cool track. Track number thirteen, Suckers Needs Bodyguards. Um, Suckers Needs Bodyguards. That track, that's actually my second favorite um song off this album, believe it or not. And it's a song where, believe it or not, it's a song where I've seen a lot of Gangstar fans kind of like they like it, but they don't. They don't. They feel like Guru. They didn't like the way Guru was rapping all hardcore, all hard on that fucking track and shit like that. Where that's like my favorite part of the whole fucking song, if you ask me, because because the way that um Guru was rapping on that, the way Guru was rapping on that fucking track was just phenomenal. Like um, you could just really feel. The anger, like you just feel the anger in his voice and shit, you know what I'm saying? And he's just talking about how, he's just talking about how, like, rappers, you know, like, again, like, like when I was talking about the, um, Code of the Streets, 
Yeah, how rappers, you know, they talk about how they're all buff, they're hard and shit like that. You know, they about that life. But why you have a fucking bodyguard present with you? Why you have a bodyguard if you hard, if you not scared of nothing and shit like that, you know? So, yeah, I just love the way he was rapping on that. I love that, love that fucking track. Um, I love the line where he says, I murdered an entire rap chart with my freestyle after the killing, just like Casper, I'm ghost. Like, whoo! Fucking dope shit right there. Fucking grimy as hell. Um, track number 14, Now You're Mine. Um, this was um, on the White Man Can't Jump soundtrack. You know the movie White Man Can't Jump? You know the movie with um, Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, um, Rosie Perez. Very dope movie and shit. Um, it's been years since I've actually seen that movie. So, yeah, man. Um, this song was actually written after Guru and Primo had like a huge fight, and they had like a fight, and um, they went, they came to blows with one another. And pretty much, if you really want to be technical, and if you really want to be technical and shit like that, you can pretty much say it's like an um. Like, you can say it's like a diss, tr a diss to Primo, if you want to say, and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, and it's crazy because I was reading an interview about Primo, and he said that after the um, song was recorded, he pretty much, Guru pretty much said, how was that? Primo said that was pretty good, and Guru just said, fuck you, and just walked out. And so, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. And it's no secret, if you guys know about Gangsta, you guys know that they... Like, you know, it's not always happiness under the, under the roof when it comes to them. They had their disagreements over the years and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Which, unfortunately, didn't really get resolved all the way by the time of Guru's past and rest in peace to Guru, by the way. But I, I don't really want to dwell on that. I don't really want to dwell on that. But, um, yeah, man, this track right here was pretty cool. Like, I like, I like the fucking line when he says, um... When I slam the alley oop, you can rally troops, but I'll play the awesome defense. I'll pick your pocket and send you to the bench with tears in your eyes as you realize the price for me. Like, you know, just still having like the basketball um, metaphors and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Basketball metaphors, keeping it convey with the um, white man can jump thing. Yeah, very, very dope track right there. Um, love it. Um, track number 15, Mostly the Voice. Uh, mostly the voice, pretty standard, solid track. I want to say that's like the song where um, you just acknowledging the fact that his voice is dope, and rappers just need a good voice so they can grab the listeners' attention. Cause if your voice is whack, then who's gonna be listening to shit? So, yeah, very dope track right there. Um, track number sixteen, fuck around, lay around. That song features um, Big Shug. Yeah, man, Big Suge is a member of, you know, the Gangstar Foundation. He was, like, originally, like I mentioned, I think in the No More Mr. Nice Guy review, he was originally a member in, like, the earliest incarceration of Gangstar. But, you know, he was, he went to prison, I want to say, like, around, like, late 80s and shit like that. And so after he got released, you know, he just became a member of the Gangstar camp and, you know, um... He definitely made an impact on the Moment of Truth album, but I'm definitely going to um, save my thoughts on that because, like I think I've already you know reviewed Moment of I've, I've reviewed Moment of Truth and shit like that, and I have reviewed this album too. But like I said, I'm told my told y'all I was gonna re -re touch upon these again because I didn't like my Gangstar reviews I did in the past and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, definitely this is a very dope track. Fuck around, lay around this them going in on the fucking mic and shit and the last track off this album is um coming for that ass um very 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 dope track right here yeah this track right here is <clears throat> guru, again guru going in on the fucking mic and shit like that um yeah man just fucking honest just fucking on this fucking you know he, he's fucking on his fucking lyrical crowd on this one and shit you know what i'm saying um, I love the line where he says, 
just like an alpine, a deadly rhyme brand spanking you, pump to put some lead in your crew, a hollow point shot, cause your weak shallow points not hitting, should have gave up from you again, like, man, Guru's lyrical performance on this whole fucking album is something that it should be definitely talked about, you know what I'm saying, but, yeah, man, this is definitely, <coughs> excuse me, this is definitely a very, very, very good album classic album by many people I want to say this is actually my um, second favorite album from Gangstar you know my first is obviously going to be Moment of Truth if you guys remember and stuff like that um, yeah man this album right here they really they were really angry as fuck when it came to this fucking album like you know this definitely didn't want to do like the same melodic shit that they were doing in the first few albums because around that same time yeah, like the early 90s, a lot of East Coast producers, they were really trying to, like, produce, like, well, before 90, before Wu-Tang, just trying to, like, produce, like, fucking Primo and whatnot, you know, with, like, the samples and the jazz, the jazz samples, you know, Primo, Pete Rock, and stuff like that, too, you know, um... But yeah, man, so that, this one with this album, they kind of switched it, when they kind of switched it and shit like that, because this how they had like a more of like, um, a stripped down album and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, like a stripped down album, they had more like, emphasis on like, the drums, drum patterns and stuff like that, um, yeah, man, and also with this album right here, Guru's, you definitely stepped his pan game up. And shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Just definitely for why he should definitely be in a discussion when it comes to um dope MCs and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Um Yeah man, what what else can you say about Hearts to Earn that has not already been said? Um definitely a must have in your collection if, especially if you love Gangstar because if you're if you're a Gangstar fan and you don't know anything or you don't have this album, I don't even know what to tell you though. And shit, because yeah. I know they re-released this album, Respect the Classics, we released it on 2014 for the 20th anniversary, so I don't, I, I, I want to say, but if, it should still be in print, like, you guys should still find this album and shit like that, you know, and you know, you know, with the recent, if I'm not mistaken, you know, um, I could swear that they were going to re-release, at one point re-release, all of, you know, Gangstar albums and shit, if I'm not mistaken, but, yeah, man, very, very, very dope album, this is, um, Gangstar, Hard to Earn, this was released in 1994, must have in your collection, and that's all the time I have for y'all, stay tuned for more, peace.